what you were just listening to was a generative music system uh, built from Metropolix and Maths. Metropolix sending pitch and gate information into Maths, Maths returning a function with a varying, uh, varying timing and varying rise and fall rates back into Metropolix, which then alters parameters in Metropolix. Uh, which affects pitch and gate information that is then sent back to maths. And so there's a feedback loop going on there. And uh, I will show you how that's set up. Uh, let's just patch some things up here. Uh, pitch from track one will alter rise and fall time of maths channel one. And pitch from track two alters rise and fall on track or on channel four of maths. Gates of track one trigger channel one on maths. The gate of track two triggers channel four on maths. So now we have a rise and fall time based on the voltage that is being sent out from the pitch sliders on each track and we have gates triggering when that rise and fall happens. So we can now route that back in to Metropolix and assign those rising and falling voltages to parameters inside of Metropolix. So there we have the full physical patch. I'm just trying to tuck these out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Uh, now I need to assign these voltages that are being returned from maths to do something interesting in Metropolix. So I'm going to assign them to stages offset. Stages offset is a parameter that determines basically the start point of each sequence uh, on each track. And by using the pitch and gate information that drives channel one of maths to alter the stages offset on track two of Metropolix and doing the same thing with track two triggering rise and fall of channel four of maths being sent back and affecting track offset or stages offset of track one we now get a feedback loop where what happens on track one changes what happens on track two, changing the output and or the voltages and gates being output, which then changes what happens on track one. And this continues to cycle around and around. Um, and it creates what you can hear in the background. Just a note, I've decided to, rather than to cover my <laughs> uh, modular system with cables in order to get voices, I'm using the MIDI out of Metropolis to drive two soft synths in Ableton Live. And uh, once we have this going way, the way we want, I'm gonna show you how to add a third voice, in which case I'm gonna use my Behringer 2600. So what are the important settings here? Um, it's important that you leave time between each trigger for a rise and fall. If you trigger on every step, you might only get part of a rise, in which case you won't be moving these start points uh, in any effective manner and you won't get the same kind of seemingly random offset. So I put a trigger on every second or a gate rather on every second step. Uh, the other thing that's really important of course is to choose a scale that makes sense. I find using like a chord uh, in this case E minor 9 or using a pentatonic scale is most effective because it leaves space between the notes. You don't get as many clashes like minor seconds and such be and, you know uh, tritones and such between notes um, of course if that's what you want that you can easily adapt it because you can use any scale you like so um, scales the next thing to think about then is the track length and div in this case I've set the lengths to five for track one and four for track two. So there's just some offset there, right? Just so that they're not marching along in sync. The other thing that I've done is set the divisions. This is important. Setting the divisions really high 
gives lots of time for this rise and fall to happen on maths. So by using every second trigger and setting the divs really high and thirdly, I don't know if that was thirdly, but whatever, uh, also using a different div length on each track uh, is going to give you these interesting polymeters, polyrhythms, I honestly, I can never remember which one is which, um, that are affecting how the voices now are played. So let's just listen to that for a moment. So if that phrasing is too sparse for you, you could add more gates. You could change your clock div, uh, or your div on each channel to be less, but you have to keep in mind that you'd need to give time for the rise and fall to happen on maths, or you won't get that offset of, of the stages. What is it called again? Let's take a look. It's called, um, doop, doop, doop. it's called stages offset. So that's that's critical in this patch. If the stages offset doesn't get moved around, this just becomes, well, just polymeters or polyrhythm. Um, okay, so this is the basic patch. Uh, we can add third voice. Third voice can be derived by taking the pitch information that's being sent to the two outer channels of maths and bring it into channels two and three of maths. I'm just gonna zero these for now. And then you'll need to take the sum output of that and bring it into some kind of pitch quantizer. In this case, I'm using organ organizations and crime. <laughs> Organized crime? No, ornaments and crime. Uh, as a pitch quantizer. And I'm gonna leave it to uh, the viewer to research how ornament and crime pitch quantization works. There's there's videos on YouTube. So we bring that pitch, that the sum of these two pitches into ornament and crime. And we need to provide also a gate so that uh, ornament and crime knows when to take a snapshot. The way we're going to use do that is to take the end of rise on channel one of maths and bring it into a logic gate. We will do the same with end of cycle on channel four, also into the logic gate. And a logic gate gives you many different ways of uh, processing and, and providing an output. And I'll also leave it up to the viewer to research logic gates. There are several modules available. I'm using the Logica XT from Clavis, and I've got it on uh, XOR, which is exclusive OR. So it's going to output only when uh, one or the other gate is high, but not both. From uh, gate, end of rise, end of cycle, anyway. Um, so that gives us a nice set of gates now that are uh, rhythmically related to what Metropolis is doing. I'm going to come out of inverted out so that the notes are offset. And I'm going to use that to trigger ornament and crime. And now you'll see ornament and crime has started moving and it's going to start providing pitches for us. So I have an extra cable. I don't know what it's for. Uh, okay, that'll come later. <laughs> So I've decided to use my Behringer 2600 as the third voice. Uh, and I'm gonna give it a gate just by taking again that inverted signal out of the logic uh, gate, or logic module. Oh, it started making a sound, but it's not in tune. We will come out of the pitch out of the pitch quantizer And there we have it. So now there's a third voice being created as a, a product of uh, 
merging the two pitches from Metropolix and deriving a gate from the end of rise and end of cycle through a logic module. But you'll notice that it's only playing one note, and that is because in order to send pitch information into the quantizer, I have to add it from here. So let's just bring these up a bit. What I did there was just mix those two pitches together to come out of the sum output and then be quantized by the pitch quantizer. Okay, that is essentially the method. It's simple, but it provides a lot of variability. Um, and there's a lot of parameters you can manipulate in here. Uh, you could, for instance, bring another uh, pitch. You could maybe bring the inverted pitch. Uh, information from maths, what am I talking about? You could, you could bring the inverted pitch information from maths and you could bring it in to the Z input on Metropolis and you could assign that to pitch pre on track one or two. Pitch pre changes the, the pitch before quantization. Uh, the, you could say the base pitch or in a sense the root note of that track before quanti before pitch quantization so that then afterward it's quantized so it's always stays in scale. So let's add a little bit of that. Adding that is going to affect the pitches that are output from track two, which is going to affect the start point of track one which is going to affect the triggers, <laughs> which are going to affect how track two is triggered and its start point. I almost get confused thinking about how this works, but it does work and it does provide a very cool sort of ambient bed of tones that you could create. Uh, if you could go further and create melodies over or use to drive other kinds of textures other than just notes and chords. Um, there's a lot of room for ex exploration in this process. Okay, so I hope that that was cool and you enjoyed it and you learned something from it. Um, and I'm just gonna let this play out. But before I do, uh, I'm refocusing Ambient Music Studio YouTube channel uh, this year in hopes of providing more um, content like this and if you like this content it would really help me if you did click the like button uh, below on YouTube down there somewhere uh, also if you want to be notified uh, you could subscribe and and click the little bell icon and then you'll be notified when I create more video of this type or of any type anyway thanks for <laughs> tuning in thanks for watching and I uh, hope you enjoyed it I'll see you soon